greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Well said by someone. Welcome back to the channel Knowledge Star. Way to continuous lifelong learning. My name is Anshika Gaur. I'm the corporate communication executive. Today we have a very special guest, Dr. Sai Kalyan, who is a research scholar, academic researcher, professor, lecturer, editor, and whatnot. Welcome, Dr. Sai Kalyan. Hello. All right. So, first of all, tell us about yourself and what made you decided to pursue this career. Well, uh, my name is Dr. Sai Kalyan. I'm a senior consultant neurosurgeon in Institute of uh, Neurosciences, AAG Hospital, Gachiboli. Uh, I come from a medical background and uh, my dad being a doctor, he was uh, he's a professor of medicine and he headed department of medicine in Kannur Government in Hospital. And I've seen him growing up because he has trained many residents and uh, he was uh, he had a lot of compassion towards this subject and and you know that made him uh, one of the uh, uh, stalwarts in the uh, medical profession. And I, I used to see him how the patients uh, used to respect him and how the students used to respect him. And uh, that, that made me, you know, uh, inclined towards this medical profession. And later on, uh, when I joined my MPS, uh, uh, it, it's like, you know, uh, you feel like uh, we, we have a, a passion towards different specialties. But once you finish your MBBS, then I thought, you know, compassion uh, towards surgery made me to take general surgery and after successful completion of my MS general surgery uh, I wanted to choose the one which is more complicated and among all super specialty branches uh, the neurosurgeon the neurosurgery particularly the brain and spine surgery is is a very complicated and you know it's, it's not easy for everyone to do so then I opted that uh, profession that uh, branch and I had a lot of interest I had a lot of compassion and I was, uh, I was I had a lot of uh, passion towards it so why is it like this? Why is it like that? And uh, that made me, you know, uh, to be to get inclined towards neurosurgery. And after finishing my residency successfully for a period of time, I did my uh, clinical attachment in England in spine surgery, in one of the reputed institutions that is the Walton Center. There, uh, the overseas consultant was also very happy with the way I used to ask the doubts, uh, and I had that, uh, uh, you know. Uh, thing that uh, to, to, to know the things so I never hesitated uh, to learn the things from seniors juniors colleagues uh, and everyone and later I came back to India and uh, for a brief period of time I stayed here and again I went to Japan to do my cerebrovascular fellowship and after successfully completion of my vascular fellowship there I came back I worked as a junior consultant in Kim's later promoted to consultant and later now I shifted to AG hospitals and uh, my field of interest are the neuro-oncology, that is the brain tumors, the endoscopic brain tumors. We, we deal with uh, endoscopy surgery, particularly the pituitary surgery and uh, cervical spine surgery, lumbar surgery and spine tumors, spine trauma and all these things. And I'm trained in the microscopy and endoscopy as well. All right, sir. All right. Sir, what are the common causes of neck pain and back pain? There are uh, several causes for uh, neck pain. Uh, the commonest being the mechanical strain or strain that occurs, you know, due to many reasons like uh, improper posture, uh, like sports injuries, and all these things. Apart from that, uh, we may have the discogenic pain, which is because of the disc, the disc whichever is there in between two vertebral bodies. This comes out and it compresses the, uh, the cervical cord or it can compress the nerve root, which causes this uh, radicular pain. And in the same way, in the, we keep often keep hearing the patient feeling sciatica, sciatica. It is nothing but, you know, the pressure over that nerve. And that can be because of the disc or it can be because of the inflammation of the joints or any infections may cause this uh, back pains and uh, neck pains like epidural abscess, a tuberculosis can also cause and some of the tumors of the spinal cord 
can also cause these pains. And of course, the trauma, the trauma during accidents and post accidents, all these things. But uh, we often uh, see this neck pain and back pain because of the mechanical stress or mechanical strain and the prolonged immobility. I mean, sitting uh, hours together in front of systems. Yes, yes. Not being conscious, yes. not being conscious about our posture. Yes. The, the yeah improper ergonomics and all these things causes this neck pain and back pain. All right, sir. Sir, which age group are vulnerable to cervical and lumbar disc? Uh, initially, we used to think that the old people, you know, are more prone to develop these uh, uh, neck pains and back pains because of this uh, degeneration, which is a natural process which happens. You know, once a uh, person gets older. But nowadays, we often see these these uh, you know, pains even in the youngsters, even the software people or the one who sits in front of uh, systems for a long time. And we have even see it in the you know young generation people in the, like post sports injuries. And uh, we often keep hearing from the patients that I looked at heavy objects Absolutely. and I had this pain, I had this this all these problems. So which has not been supervised basically in a gym uh, youngster who goes to gym and lifts a weight without any supervision suddenly he develops the neck pain or he develops back pain and uh, we, we get the test done we examine him and we find out that the disc has come so uh, it has been common now in uh, you know, there is no as a specific age group it, it affects both the young, young people and even the aged group okay all right sir do spine patients require surgery? Yeah, see, the thing is that when we have this problem, say the neck pain, and the pain which is radiating or the back pain which is radiating, initially, you know, it's better to come to a doctor and get examined. Okay, we have a set of uh, neurological examination which we do on the patient and we'll come to a conclusion and based on that, we are going to ask for some investigations. There will be a battery or set of investigations so we confirm it with the investigations and if it is really necessary then we offer the patient surgery but it and most of the time 90 percent of the patients they don't request surgery at all it's not 90 95 percent there are only specific indications for surgery in spine so uh, it's better to consult the expert and uh, get evaluated for the same and then the doctor is going to offer you so we generally offer a different management uh, policies to the patient Initially, we go with a conservative trial, and if it doesn't fail, then we go for surgery. And there are some indications, like if the patient is having any severe pain in spite of uh, medication, or is having any uh, extruded disc or a migrated disc, which is really compressing the nerve. And because of that compression, uh, patient may develop the paralysis and all these things. In that aspect, definitely, yeah, we need to go and get the surgery done. But most of the time, it has to be evaluated initially before uh, jumping into the surgery, okay? So 95% they don't request surgery at all because it's mostly the mechanical strain and strain. Yes. So the proper evaluation will guide us whether to go for surgery or not. Okay, sir. Sir, is it true that yes. spine surgery is with lots of failure rate? Yeah, uh, initial days, yeah. Initial days and the uh, traditional spine surgeries where we used to open some uh, hole back so, and... Uh, in those days, yeah, the complication rates uh, were high, I suppose. But with the advent of this new technology and techniques, the spine surgery complication rates have significantly come down. See, now uh, we do the minimally invasive spine surgery, where you know we uh, we use the uh, you know uh, the corridor which is uh, very minimal and uh, the tissue uh, injury is also very minimal and. Uh, we used to hear from you know from our uh, grandfathers and grandparents that the person who used to undergo spine surgery became bedridden. He used to he was on the bed for a long time. It is not like that now. Early ambulation, post surgery, we do early ambulation, and it has become a daycare. I mean, for recently we did a disc surgery. We admit the patient in the morning. We do an endoscopic discectomy. We ambulate the patient in the evening based on his pain tolerance. We are discharging him the same day. And uh, the idea of uh, you know uh, doing these surgeries is early ambulation so that the patient can get back to his normal life very early. So the complication rates, as I said, with this uh, advent of uh, 
techniques and technology has significantly significantly has come down that is one thing and second thing is the expertization the more number of cases we do uh, the more workshop we attend the more knowledge we share and the more normally what i do is i i have uh, interest so whenever a new technique comes i go to the workshops i attend the conferences i meet the experts in that particular field i uh, i i uh, clarify my doubts whatever i have and i don't feel shy in clarifying my doubts so and i come and uh, i go to the literature so what are the success rates in it and then we do and then we adopt and by doing more cases yeah significantly the complication rates come down so okay. the technique is also important and expertization is very important here okay okay sir so what are the new surgical techniques in spine surgery as i said uh, we are doing nowadays the minimal spine surgery that uh, it's a micro surgery it can be done under microscope or it can be done under endoscope so even we call it as a keyhole surgery or a stitchless surgery so hardly we take a 2 mm incision we pass this scope inside we see it in the tv and uh, without disrupting or without damaging the body tissue like the bone or the ligament whatever is there and there is very minimal very 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 minimal uh, uh, damage to the tissue and we are going to remove the base and the same way we are uh, we stabilize the spine by putting some screws and rods so initial days we used to do a big incision open it open the tissue like this it is not like that now we we do it under uh, 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 technique called as a neuro navigation we have specialized instrument called as oarm that is a interoperative ct scan and under that guidance it's something like a navigator the google navigator so we have got a neuro navigation system with us so under these things we are going to put the screws See, all these things is to minimize the errors and increase the accuracy and reduce the complications okay so sir do stem cells work in lumbar or uh, cervical disc pain uh, yeah i mean a lot of uh, studies are going on this and a lot of research is going on this and some of the studies yeah they uh, uh, they are in favor of uh, uh, you know uh, they say that yes when we inject these stem cells we remove the stem cells and we inject into the disc space they say that uh, the disc is going to get regenerated yeah but still multiple studies have to come multiple studies have to come and some of the scientists and researchers have tried on this and they say they have published the successful literature as well i mean they said that the uh, disc got regenerated once the uh, stem cells were injected into the disc space particularly the degenerated disc space and eventually the pain has also come down Okay, sir. Uh, we always heard from everyone that for this pain, do this exercise or that exercise. So, does exercise worsen or improve pain? Uh, it, uh, of course. See, the patient comes to us uh, with a uh, neck pain or back pain. We generally evaluate it, and after doing the clinical examination, we get the tests done, and based on that, uh, the latest guidelines say. So, suppose the patient is having a mechanical strain or strain. we ask them to take bed rest for not more than 3 days okay and in fact we encourage them we encourage them to go for uh, strengthening exercises core stabilizing exercises back strengthening exercises because the the, the exercise is particularly the back strengthening exercises and all these things stabilizing exercises they, they you know the pain threshold they yes. increase the pain threshold yes. okay they yeah, are definitely it is beneficial beneficial and again it depends upon the pathology i mean the disease exactly say suppose the patient is having a trauma trauma and he had a fracture in that cases we are not supposed to encourage the patient to do the exercises unless until uh, that has been that has been stabilized or that has been addressed and i suggest all my patients to do swimming it swimming which is a you know, good exercise for the spine okay sir so now uh, what message do you want to give to those who want to uh, pursue this career and who already pursuing in this field see i feel i personally feel they have to have this compassion and uh, they should be having the fascination okay uh, if, if you take i mean uh, when i was a student and uh, you know when i took this profession there were a lot of things to learn see, this is a uh, ever ending never ending process okay Lifelong, you need to read, you need to learn the new things, you need to discuss with your seniors, junior, and you shouldn't feel shy or this thing. So the one, maybe the 
uh, youngsters who are pursuing this career uh, should have focus they should be more focused about what they want exactly yes sir. because see, the, what was there 20 years back is not a uh, gold standard now the 20 years back we never had the indian system we never had these uh, hardly very few centers had uh, micro surgeries and endoscopic surgeries now these micro surgeries and endoscopic surgeries everyone are doing that is because availability and uh, the interest of the particular candidate who wants to learn the new thing so they should have that enthusiasm compassion and all these things have to be balanced to be more successful in this profession okay all right sir thank you sir you have shared very valuable information and yeah. also thank you for thank your you. time your support thank you. thank you for this wonderful interaction thank you thank you so much thank you so much for more updates subscribe to our channel click the links shown on the screen to stay connected